What attracted you to a career in television? Well, I think I was very lucky. My dad was a writer, and by a process of osmosis, I'd soaked up um, his sort of passion and enthusiasm for the moving image. Um, and so I suppose in the end, um, it was inevitable that I went into film and TV. I gather that one of your first pieces of filmmaking was a music video. My graduation film, as it were, was a music video about a one-hit wonder band called Thunderclap Newman. Um, and it cost 75 pounds, and by some you know, amazing chance, the band got to number one. And suddenly we had phone calls from Danish TV and Mexican TV saying, oh, Thunderclap Newman, you, you have the video. So I was able to look for a job in television having had uh, shown some enterprise, having made a film, um, and everyone had heard of Thunderclap Newman at that time. No one's heard of him now, but they had then. In 1976, you made Johnny Go Home. These things happen in a random way, and one of my colleagues at Yorkshire Television um, had been editing in Soho uh, up late, and as he came out of the cutting room, he stumbled across a couple of young boys who were sleeping above the warm vents of a bakery. I just started to look around and set out with the idea of making a social documentary about the growing phenomenon of kids uh, in a tough economic time, leaving their uh, homes all over the country and coming to London because they thought they were Dick Whittington. The success of BAFTA, the, the, the win for Johnny Go Home, did you feel that you, it gave you so much more freedom? I'd been filming in Australia and I flew back and literally landed that day at, uh, at Heathrow and went to the award ceremony in the evening. So I had no idea what country I was in, what category I was up for. I'd been away for four months. I didn't even, you know, I didn't recognize my wife. Um, so the evening went in a blur. But afterwards, of course, you settled back and you felt, um, in, in, a, in a modest way, I felt it was a validation not of me, but of the film, of the subject matter. I want to sort of move forward slightly now to your, your move away from directing. I think to move from directing to becoming a uh, controller of a department or of a channel, I found a very painful experience because it wasn't something that I sought or wanted to do. It was something that other people wanted me to do. I suppose I made a trade-off. I thought, well, that's the end of making films. But I'm going to be responsible for many, many hours uh, of films and other filmmakers. Um, but I miss making films. It's standing on a street corner in Halifax, you know, with a with a film crew, watching the world go by, um, sitting in a cutting room with a, you know, two-hour documentary, complicated, difficult, uh, still the kind of great pleasures in life. In your role as chair, what what did you want to bring to sort of help shape? the way that BAFTA was progressing. What I was most passionate about, and I said it from the, right from day one, was the charitable remit of BAFTA, because I think most people see BAFTA as red carpets and glamour, and it seemed to me that BAFTA had a fantastic opportunity to take um, the best-in-class awards that people looked up to and to use the, those awards and the membership as a way of inspiring next generations. Um, whether they're in films or TV or in video games. Having served your two years and also... You're making it sound like a prison sentence. <laughs> Having been chair for two years, yes. are you sort of happy with your time there? You know, I'd seen it, I think, before I took it as a sort of, a sort of oh, well, you get to the stage in your career where you do these sort of things, but it, it'll be a lot of work but not much fun. And actually, it has been great fun. John Willis, thank you. Thank you. Television still has the capacity to bring a nation together, not just for sport, but for big news events, national occasions, and even who the killer was in Broadchurch. I would say every day was, was very, very different. Um, there might be the common denominator of a coffee, um, but apart from that, work-wise, um, you might expect to turn up and be filming, um, but more often than not, it's knowing when not to film as, as important as knowing when to film.